end of this session, we will be able to use this in Randori. Take a lot of kata, put them in the blender that's called either my head, one of the instructor's head, usually it's Vika's head, and from the distillate, okay, we try to uh, isolate the different foundations of what we do. So we better think of these positions as flowcharts. When I was younger, I used to program in BASIC and FORTRAN. We always had an abstract flowchart. So this is the if, okay? I'm standing and holding him. What is this if thing? I'm holding him. If everything is okay, then we just hug. Okay, if everything is not okay and I want to throw him, I can look who I am standing in front of. If he's a heavy guy, I don't want to risk entering and being in his turf, okay? Just a throw against a throw, maybe he's better than me. So I will be using uh, the real knowledge, the Fudo real knowledge. Let's uh, consider a little bit few katas in Fudo Ryu, Ju Jitsu. There is Daken Jitsu and Ju Jitsu. These katas, like uh, Saka Otoshi and Fusetsu no kata, they deal with uh, the deciding factors of using kicks in combination with throws. Kicks with throws. We'll see a few examples, and I hope uh, the whole thinking okay, of uh, this uh, uh, Ryu will be more clear to us. And moreover, I hope that at the end of this session, we will be able to use this in Randori. So, let us start with this. Okay, this distance, okay, let's say it's the distance in Saka Otoshi, okay, is one distance we will deal with, and the other distance is this. Pay attention that uh, in uh, Fudori Uju Taijitsu, many times this is the hold, okay, and like this. So I'm holding and controlling him like this. But we will substitute this hold, okay, which has a lot of reasons in Japanese wear, okay, wardrobe, ancient Japanese wardrobe, with this hold that for us is a, a way more useful. We get into it more. It is more common now. Everybody uses this over under hold. And uh, without heat, this is the only hold we can do. Okay. I will now uh, show how I control the opponent's uh, distance using the feet. So usually what we do is this. I lift the leg and kick. Okay, so this is Soku Gyaku Giri. I lift and kick. But there is a problem. When I do Soku Gyaku Giri and then I push, I get the throw, but in Randori situations, when I do this, he will see the knee getting up, okay? If I do it in a shallow way, it will not have the same impact because the leg will not have the full distance to gather speed. It's just like a racing car. So I need some distance for the leg to build speed. 
So I am going to substitute this kick with a Fudorio kick that unfortunately I don't see many people who preserve. And uh, again, uh, this is our tradition. We must preserve it. Moreover, this is really fun kick. What I do is this. This is the trajectory of the kick. This is the way we will uh, learn it, this. Notice that the knee, uh, I just brush it. You hear? OK, let's see from this angle. So this is the trajectory. After I learned the trajectory, I am able to really kick. What I'm kicking is the inside thigh, okay? The inner head of the hamstrings. If I want to do really damage, I'll do it near the knee. Okay, so I'm kicking this. Controlling his weight, one, he will move the leg back. If he does not move the leg back, this leg will be useless. The whole weight will be here. I will go here with a jig step, move everything here and do a scoop back. Few more times. Okay, so what is the benefit that these kind of kicks give me? Instead of lifting the knee high up, okay, the whole trajectory of the kick is beneath our, uh, beneath our belt level, here. So he doesn't see the knee rising up, he kicks down. All happens here. So this is the first kick, and also Togake or also Togiri. And this is the second kick, here, bam. And again, I will not kick with the inside chin because kicking with the inside chin, okay, or kerikai shi, only happens in Yoku Ryu in certain circumstances. Here, we don't see it, okay? So I'm kicking with the heel. Kicking with the heel one, and lifting up. Just organizing him for the throw. Below his eye level. And the previous one, both. So I'm controlling the leg position and weight distribution. I forgot to turn off the air condition. One, two. And then right heel kicks his right knee, one, two, or if we go to photo view, this is beyond the scope of this lesson, one, two. Okay, so what we did before is sneak the inside heel kick and control this, and at the last uh, technique we, we see, I control this and get in. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to, first of all, learn the technique correctly, put respect, put love in the technique, do this many times. Okay, so now I have the Uchikomi honed a little bit and the other throw. But every throw necessitates me controlling the distance. So you remember the if. This is kicking, and he allows me to get inside. But what happens if he is too strong? I really broke his knee, but he's holding me like this. So I'm doing one, trying to enter, and nothing. First of all, we have a hole if section on. 
throws against arm locks. It's a different section. You can look it up in the net. Arm locks and throws immediately. But here today, we just want to focus on kicks. So if I do this and try to enter and it pushes me away, who is controlling the distance? He does. He controls the distance. If he controls the distance, is fifth or fourth timing. Because right now, he opens up for me uh, the opportunity to knock him out. Easy, everybody knows it. So one, two, knock out. Again, one, two. Kick, don't push the stomach. It's just not like a regular push kick, okay? You want to maintain big distance, kick is stern. Base of stern. So one, two, hold. One, two. Look, two options. The same leg does inside, same leg inside, building distance, boom, knock out. Now, second option. One leg inside, other leg knocks out. So one, two, one, two. And again, one, two, same leg, one, other leg. Okay, this is a group of kata that deal with this distance. Again, in Fudori Uju Tai Jitsu. We still did not document it. I don't see any good documentation existing now. But uh, hopefully the instructors will pick up the glove and lift it and we will have these katas soon. Very important katas, because now we can extract more uh, understanding out of what we see here. Okay, what is the relationship between kicks and the technique we want to do? It's very complicated. Today we just do kicks and throws. That's it. Okay? Let's continue with this uh, if diagram. Please come to it. Now we said this distance allows me many things. First of all, to control him. Okay, then if he doesn't let me get near to knock him out, it's just like a submission technique. Or uh, I can combine this with this, but uh, it's way above this lesson's goal. Okay, today we'll just do the basic thing. But what happens if this is the norm? Okay, he takes me close. So it's either very close here, or soon we have our hands on the belt. So what do we have here? Again, we have uh, over under, over under, and we see it a lot. Even with the gi work, with uh, gis, we see it a lot. Okay, the, the, we have after a little family, we close distance. We have this here. So here we have few things. Okay, first of all, uh, because a lot of people in Afghan are very experienced in this kind of uh, work. Uh, what we see is because I don't want him to kick my groin, uh, I will catch his knee. He will usually, if he doesn't have something very important to, to do, he will grab my knee. Okay, so now we have immobilized each other. Now, if he doesn't have uh, long pants, then uh, first of all, if he is an Israeli guy, I can always grab the hair. Okay, on the knee. <laughs> okay? And, and if he's not an Israeli guy, uh, I will do this, but it's not the same. Okay? To prevent him, if he doesn't have uh, something, I, I will put the hand here. So if he tries to kick my groin, I have this hand here. So it limits me a little bit, but it's good for the next exercise, because what I'm going to do is, first of all, very briefly kick, and return here, okay? Why is returning so important? Because when I kick, he controls everything, and if I, am not, I don't do it explosively, he will use this and throw me, because here, any movement, he will take me out of range. So I want to stand like a sumo, okay? And kick, come back. When I kick, I want it to be like a sickle, okay, here. If I lift the kick very close to him, it's nothing. 
doesn't have enough space to develop speed. So I want to start the kick here. When I'm kicking him, okay, I want, when I'm kicking him, uh, first of all, I want to guard my partner and, and uh, make him safe. So I will not kick the pressure point. I had a big argument, uh, but very polite one, over the internet, wow, where is the kobura? Okay, this uh, pressure point, but uh, so I show you what our kobura is. Okay, is this point behind the fibula, which is a bone, okay? And it's a nerve just behind this bone. And uh, when I do this, I can feel this nerve do. Looks like, or feels like a ligament. The nerve is so big here, okay, I'm thinner. The nerve is so big here that I can feel him, feel it behind this bone, okay? So the kubura for me is this. So many people said the kubura is here. I don't care, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's call this the Akban Kubua, okay, or let's call it Moshe, I don't care. Okay, so what I do is when he grabs my knee, I use it and I kick the Kubua. So one, and I return, two, and I return. So this way after two or three kicks, he will not be able to move this leg. It's good for me, because then I can do many things, okay of throwing him because he will not have this leg as support. Again, advanced technique. Right now we just do grabbing the knee, kicking the kubuwa, please. If I see that he's too uh, uh, imposing, I can force the throw on him. If he doesn't let me get near the throw, okay, then I have a submission, a knockout. If he closes distance and grapples with me, let's say over under, so first of all, if he immobilizes my knee, okay, what I have to do is immobilize his knee and do this. If he doesn't have tents, I can do this. Just hold this, okay, the inside knee, so when he kicks my groin, okay, he will not be able to get me. Okay, and this. Okay. But now, let's move on. I'm grappling for position. So by the way, if you don't do a lot of uh, submission, the basic thing is, when I'm pushing him, is front shoulder, front leg, like this. If I do like this, it may be an opening for a technique, but it is incorrect, okay? It's not a basic technique, because he can push me fairly easy, okay, if I'm standing like this. So here, Standing like this, okay? And you can see this stance on many Greek vases. It's very ancient, okay? Also in Egypt, you can see this stance. Of course, without a gi. So, I'm standing here and I want to open him. So what I do is this jig, bam. Again, this is very important. Jig, bam. And he will move this leg there. there. So this way I'm pushing his leg back. Why is the jig so important? Look from this angle. When I'm standing and holding him over under, if I just kick inside knee or inside thigh, okay, I don't have any control over my position. I uh, sacrifice my position. Now he can throw me back. Okay, because I did it correct for our stance. In order to correct for our stance, I do a jig and pass the line that connects both his legs. Now I'm way over his center of gravity and I can kick and return to my previous stance. Again. Now after doing this, I have the whole drill. I do family. Now I understand. Jig, kick. Jig, kick. Always my leg outside. Always quickly return to stance. Always. Of course, when I'm kicking him inside me, I can, as easy as, okay, as nothing, I can just lift and kick him in the groin. So same technique, 
in the groin. Of course, suitable for street, not suitable for run door. Let's jump from Fudoryu into a, another kata, another system, Yofuryu, from Fritzschuli. And what is the thread here? Okay, when he attacks or I go through his attack and attack from the side. So I do the same thing here in a grappling situation. Okay, what I do is I try to keep. First of all, he might identify my wing, okay, and you think he's doing that. So it's one possibility. Other possibility is the lady takes his middle. So here I am very, very simple. Okay, so jig, boom. Jig, boom. Jig, boom. And again, jig, boom. Okay, this is one technique. We don't have a lot of time just to give it space. We'll move on to our next technique. If I kick him, okay, and he moved his leg, now there is an opening for me. For what? Sutemiwaza. So we have three kinds of sutemiwaza we will deal with now. First one is using the knee. Why do I use the knee? Because there is not enough space between us, maybe he tries to lift me, to throw my leg, like in Yoko Wakare. I cannot throw my leg. So. I just bend this knee and put it on the mattress near his feet. Other way of throwing is the same if I have space. Boom, I clear this leg. Now I have more space. So what I do is throw the leg. Notice that I leave him, okay? In order for him, because he's like this, and I will throw him on his shoulder and part of his head. In street, very good. In dojo, not so good. So I'm letting him go. And bam. So this is the second throw. The third one is what? Take the leg back. And here, just notice how is he standing and take the same leg that he and throw it like